Hi guys, I'm Sam from the Unity of Life and welcome back to my glorious channel. And today, we're going to be looking at animal behaviour, which you may have already known if you have watched my last video. So what we've done recently, we looked at um, different ways in which animals affect us and how we affect them so how animals work in our lives and how we have treated them in the past and we've also looked at some animal related laws so now we are going to have a look at my um expertise which is animal behavior and if anybody who knows me or has been snooping around on our person on our um instagram account you will know that i am a trained animal behaviorist i am qualified um and i spent three years looking at solitary animal behavior so i'm going to talk um you through a little bit of animal behavior um and i'm going to try and not get too heavy into the subject because it is a very difficult subject and you will get a headache like i said i spent three years studying this topic and i can tell you this um it led to a lot of heartache and a lot of headaches because there was a lot of things that i did not understand so what i'm going to talk to you about today is what about is it it's a time budget study what is a time budget study and the animals that we are looking at are two different types of apes which is a chimpanzee and a lar gibbon and we're looking at their locomotion uh, and this is for a better of understanding of welfare at Chester Zoo. Um, I am going to be talking about zoos in a, a later video because I know that uh, there's a lot of problems with zoos. A lot of people sit on the fence about zoos. However, um, this was just university work and if, regardless if I liked zoos or not, it was something that I had to go on and I did have to do. So what is a time budget study? Well, in this instance, we were looking specifically at the locomotion of an animal. So a locomotion is the movement of an animal. Oh, uh, and before we get too much into this, I did say that this is two apes. So anybody who doesn't know the difference between an ape and a monkey, because this happens a lot of the time and it annoys me, the simplest and more easiest way for you to remember the difference between an ape and a monkey is apes do not have tails and monkeys do, okay? You are technically an ape. You do not have a tail. Um, you don't have as much hair as them but <laughs> you're still technically an ape yourself and do not have a tail unless you do have a tail then good for you <laughs> so the way an animal move it moves it can give us a, give us an indicator of the welfare of the animal as you know yourself if you have a pet if they start limping the first thing you're going to think about is oh they've hurt their paw and this is sort of what this was all about. So a way that an animal can move, it can tell you a lot about their physical health, um, unless they're a prey animal, um, and then they're very good at hiding um, any difficulties that they may be having um, because uh, physically, because they don't want to be eaten by predators. And if they show their weakness, they're an easy lunch basically and um, the whole point is to try and survive and not be eaten so we've mentioned that a time budget study was conducted it was conducted at Chester Zoo we looked at those two species um, which was a gibbon a large gibbon and a chimpanzee um so This was basically uh, what we were looking for was we looked at um, different predicted behaviours. So you start off with predicted behaviours, behaviours that you do know and that you expect to see from the animal. And then you have a category that says other, which is a category where you're going to write any behaviours that you weren't expecting to see. Because uh, that happens a lot. Animals are sneaky. Um, and it's how we learn about them as well. 
so for this particular study we were looking at, at the behavior that the animal did uh, it performed and how long it performed that term that behavior for so if it was swinging from a tree how long was it swinging from that tree so this type of study it can be used on any animal in any environment and it doesn't matter if that animal is domesticated or wild um so it might be a fun little activity for you to do on your own pet if you've got a pet inside so let me just quickly explain um what a time budget study is so it's basically you have a list of behaviors so you have these behavior categories and you will then have these things called a description right and you have to when you're writing this it's really annoying because you have to write down exactly what that behavior is uh, you've got to pretend that this behavior has never been seen by anybody else in their entire lives it's only been seen by you and you have to describe what that is so the behaviors that we had we had swing climb foraging grooming social interaction out of sight uh out of sight basically means that the animal is no longer in sight of the observer so you can't see what the animal is doing which is so annoying i'm not gonna lie other we've already mentioned so other is any behavior that you were not expecting an animal to do and we also have rest so i had eight behaviors there so a rest so for an example for a description so the rest is the animal is either lying down or sitting and isn't doing anything else and may simply be resting after an energetic course of action the resting may occur in locations including on the ground on fallen trees or platforms on trees and branch trees a social interaction is where one animal is doing something with another animal um, and that could be they're chasing each other around or they're grooming each other um, or it could even be a mother feeding her offspring so let's get into um, another study that was quite similar just so you can get an idea of what it was that we were doing so there was a time called stu uh, budget study that was con conducted on breeding Arab mares so these are domesticated horses and they are absolutely beautiful breed of horses that are absolutely stunning so they did 20 minute focal and scan samples which were conducted from 9 a.m to 3 p.m so it is also very important that you write down and you note what time it is that you start what time you finish and you can work out how long that animal was doing that behavior so a focal and scan sampling so focal is where you will look at one individual for um a number of time and you will mark down all their behaviors uh, and that only really gives you an idea of the behaviours for that individual because even though you're looking at animals of the same species every individual animal also has its own behaviours and will do things um, in a different way as you should know from um, ourselves a scan sampling is where you look at every animal that there is okay in that enclosure and you write down all their behaviors so when you're doing a focal and scan sampling what you're going to do is you're going to say right for each 20 minutes i'm going to pick one animal and i'm going to watch that animal and then for the whole of those 20 minutes and i'm going to jot down every single behavior that they did in that 20 minute time period i'm also going to say how long they did that particular behavior from that 20 minute period and when that 20 minute period is up i'm going to look at a total different animal of the same species that's also available to me and i'm going to do that from the period of nine to three that's not always the case but it is the case in this one um, and they were looking specifically at social behavior because they wanted to know about social interaction um, in horses because horses do live in groups known as a herd 
um, and they have hierarchies and things like that and the social interaction um, shows you which animal is more dominant of the other. Uh, so that's basically what we decided that we were going to do um, for these gibbons and these chimpanzees because we were set with boundaries in a zoo because you only had so you only had a certain time period in which you did to do this so in the science world when you go out um into the field and you do studies like this you're not gonna just do it nine till three on one day you can spend months even years doing the same thing over and over again every single day this builds up your data set and you've got this really big data set it's something that i mentioned in the last video um but we were talking about data in the past and it gives you more of an understanding of that particular behavior and what that behavior means and why it is that animals are doing that behavior because animals always do something for a reason there's never they don't just do something for the hell of it so so it's so it's believed but we're going to get into that on a different episode um where we we only had that one day and we had to be sure that our chosen two species so before we even went to the zoo we had to have an idea of what species we were looking at and where those species were in the zoo because they had to be pretty close together because you were going to look at one species in the morning and one species in the afternoon and you had to be able to um, make sure you had the most time available to you to be able to get it done so you had the same amount of time that you observed the chimpanzees and you had the same amount of time that you were watching the gibbons um, and they were the two closest that we could get together um so this these time budgets things helps especially the zoo helps you to identify any abnormal behaviors um, that do happen in zoos unfortunately because these animals are not meant to be living in captivity they are meant to be in the wild um, and these abnormal behaviors they give an indicator of the state of the animal's um, mental health however if they're not doing behaviors as uh, these abnormal behaviors as such then their mental health is generally okay and there's nothing too um, worrisome there. So the important behaviours of focus in this study, um, so we had two locomotion categories which was climbing and swinging because um, these apes literally climb and swing more than they do walk. Um, and they and we apothesize because you always have to have a hypothesis, um, which is basically a prediction of where you think or what where you think the experiment is going to go. What results do you think you're going to get? So our hypothesis for this was that the chimpanzees were going to climb more than the gibbons, and these predictions were met because gibbons have longer, slimmer arms. They are built for swinging from tree to tree, where chimps are built to climb. So to be able to, to to look at this, you kind of do need to have a look at the anatomy of the animal as well and have some basic background knowledge of the animal. Um, and you can get a lot from its anatomy just by looking at it. So, like I said, there was a lot of preparation actually going into the, to the experiment before we even got to the experiment. Um, when we were looking at these this species it's like does is there a shelter for the enclosure because if it's a horrible wet miserable day you don't want to be stood outside for f hours or all day in the absolute rain and getting soaked so is there a shelter nearby that you can still see the animal and yet you can keep dry um and if the animal did decide to go inside because some animals do have an indoor enclosure and an outdoor enclosure can you still see the animals in the inside enclosure or could you not uh, like I said they had to be the species had to be similar so you can get a comparison which eg that's like that's why you had to have like um, two felines two apes two canines 
whatever the animal was you had to have two really similar species and because they were both apes they were really similar and like i said just make the comparison sim uh, a lot easier uh, it could you know you're not going to compare a horse to a gorilla per se because they're not going to have a lot of similarities because they're two completely different species that they're not even similar at all um so we we looked at the fact that um, also that these two species do in fact live in social groups because they're chimps they're not chimps they apes like us and um we like we don't like being on our own we do like to be with people uh, even though there's a lot of people that prefer animals over people it is it is generally the way that we are built and we can live in families so chimps they live in troops as so troops are made up of some individuals that are related and others that are not related and they have a dominant hierarchy where chimps they live in a family group there's no dominant hierarchy and there's no unrelated um individuals in that tiny little group so you'll have mum dad and offspring uh, and we decided we were going to do a 10 minute focal animal continuous sampling observation and this happened for a two hour period um, and 12 observations were made in relation to each species so this continuous sampling basically meant instead of looking at just the one animal for each 10 minute um period and moving on to another animal you were watching all of those animals at the same time pretty much you were um going around and you were just picking up on the first sort of behavior that you saw that gave you an interest in this was over a two hour period um so we and you had like 12 observations we didn't have a very lot of time to do this and we were meant to record it in an animal behavior pro app um which is only for apple and I'm not going to go into how to use the app because it's an absolute nightmare and I don't think you need to know how to use the app because like I said it's just a nightmare um, and then once we collected all the data we then put all the data we email it to ourselves from the app and then we put it through a program known as SPSS which any uni student from a science point of view can tell you is horrible it is a nightmare and it's all statistics and it is just it is the worst piece of thing ever i mean ours worse because ours is coding um but we're not going to get too much into spss because like i said you don't need to really know what it is or how it was used um but sps basically it gives you the statistics so we can show you if there's any outliers it gives you all the numbers that you need to be able to say this is what this is definitely what happened this is the most common behavior or this is the least common behavior or this behavior that we've never seen before happens quite a lot it wasn't just a one-off by one individual so i want to quickly go through the results because um like i said i don't want to give anybody a headache um this type of study obviously does give people a headache um so i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you it is the best that i um i can um in layman's terms so like we suspected the chimpanzees they did more climbing than what the gibbons did and the gibbons did more swinging um we were quite lucky that the animals stayed in sight and there was no other behaviors that we weren't expecting didn't occur the gibbons didn't do any perform any grooming behaviors while we were there but the chimps did however the chimps didn't f term do any foreign chimp behaviors unlike the gibbons because they have different feed times with them being in the zoo um and the gibbons rested just a tiny little bit more than what the gibbons did um and the social interaction only seemed to be with the chimps and not the gibbons so just to sum it all up the results were quite interesting from a welfare point of view and would have been vastly different if we had more time in which to do the experiment rather than the doing the uh, i think it was six observations for each animal potentially anyway we only had like a two hour period um so if we did this longer we would have had vastly different results and they probably would have been a lot more similar so it was very interesting from a welfare point of view and now we know 
which locomotion behaviour each animal actually favours and it was um, exactly what we had predicted um, which is good um, but it also feels like you didn't really learn much when that does happen and occur um, and that's all to do with their environment and the way that they are built from evolutionary point of view as well as chimps tend to be a bit too heavy um, to be swinging around so climbing's a lot easier for them plus they tend to have thicker trees in their environment than what humans do so we now know because chimps climb and gibbons swing if there's something if it does look right in the swinging maybe that the gibbons not using two arms it's only using the one or the given the chimp is struggling to climb to that is it going to be an indication that something is wrong um and that they may need veterinary treatment so this is all you need to know if you're going to be um a zookeeper you, you need to know all these things um but some behaviours may also indicate that there's some maintenance needs done with the enclosure um, because maybe an animal has nicked itself um, or a screw um, that's come loose or something like that. They can hurt themselves um, that way. That's why we always maintain our enclosures. And we also um, now know that since they live in much bigger groups, um, and have a hierarchy the more uh, which is different to given they live in smaller groups and they're all related so that is pretty much it because there's a lot in here that you don't really need to know um oh so there was one study um when we're talking about similar animals that and that was conducted on gorillas and chimpanzees and they mainly looked at the body sizes um which you can only think about animals and gorillas are huge and they're bigger than chimpanzees um and what they were looking for was the effect of the body size and the on the way that the animal moves uh and the results of, from the gorilla were compared to the chimpanzees results uh, which they wanted to investigate how each species develops from an infant to an adult and how that development impacts how each species moves and the study found that the gorilla's locomotion so the way that they moved develops a lot faster than what the chimpanzees do um, and one zoo they decided that they were going to examine the locomotion of a one-armed juvenile gibbon because he has an unfair advantage because he only had one arm i think he had to have it amputated i can't remember why um and they compared him to the rest of his family because they had two arms um and it was believed that the young gibbon would avoid any movement which involved using his arm um, and the results showed that the one arm given was just as active as his younger brothers and there wasn't much difference between how each juvenile moved regardless that one had one arm and one had two so that's all i have today on this particular um video um so that was just a very brief cash course into what a time budget study is um and the reason that i decided to come over this um in behaviors that a time budget study is the simplest um study and experiment that you can perform when it comes to animal behavior um, because obviously you are observing an animal's behavior when you're doing a time budget budget study this wasn't the first time i had to do a time budget study um i did have to do one when i was at college when i did animal management because there was a behavior module um but it wasn't as in-depth as this um this one is really uh really was very in-depth and i hope i didn't give anybody a headache i know i got a headache when i um i carried it out and i wrote the um report up as well so i hope you've learned something today and if you have and you found it all very very interesting then click on my face you know you want to right here and uh that means you've subscribed and if you want to don't forget to well 
Don't forget to click to press the notification bell and you will be notified of the uploads that I um, every time I upload a video, which is every Wednesday and Saturday. Right that time, <laughs> right way around that time. And for any other animal related videos, there will be a playlist here so you can click on that and check out all the like, other animal related videos. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!